now it's time to talk about risk register based on the information you've got from previous uh, slides right now you can um, prepare yourself for creating a risk register file but risk register can be called risk log as well risk register is a file or document of your risks and responses it includes results of qualitative and quantitative or risk analysis too so whatever you have done and you have learned so far you need to put all of them in one table or a document and this is an important document should be used in the um, future the qualitative part covers the uh, prioritization you need to prioritize risks based on the probability and impact of the risk so what is the priority of that specific risk but this priority as i said it's based on a little bit analysis for based on the impact likelihood of that specific risk so needs a bit uh, analysis then we need to use quantitative techniques to analyze uncertainty and likelihood of a specific incident what would be the effect of the risk on your project the risk register document is used to show how these can be managed and controlled all of those items you need to identify each risk with the number and describe it in a different column with more details so it will be more clear what the risk is about so we have one specific column about the risk ID one specific uh, column about the risk description so you may want to add one more column here about the date raised the date the risk was identified as well that can be useful the next column or the number four can be category of the risk or causes number five as well so for each item you need one specific column as well then you need to identify the likelihood of the risk how likely is that uh, the risk will occur so there are a couple of scales for example in this slide i'm talking about five different scales but there is a possibility to have three different scales as well high medium or low so you can adopt different types of uh, like would scales as well then you need to talk about severity of likelihood how severe is it and this will be calculated by multiplying the likelihood by impact of risk so this can be another column sometimes you need to give the risk uh, more details i mean you need to provide more details for the risk then you need to say what is the uh, result of all qualitative and quantitative analysis you need to put all of them in one specific column for that specific risk okay in the next column you need to talk about the owner of the risk who owns the risk so you may need to identify who is the owner or the risk uh, owner of the risk and who would be the owner of tracking or monitoring the risk so how this can be mitigated later as well so you need to have a mitigation uh, contingent plan and action you need to talk about the progress on action you need to report it or record it and at the end you need to uh, pro, uh, clarify the status of the risk for example is that open in progress or closed and this risk register file is very important to be prepared before the project will be used during the project at the end of the project you go back and double check all of them and see if you if you achieved 
your plan and why yes why not and this can be used for next projects as well so this is going to be a very important document in the future so here I'm going to show you like a shoring system this shoring system is just an example of one of uh, activities we do in a construction site this is not the only one we have so many different ones you have seen a couple of examples like an example of a tower crane but here you can see the concrete pump here so this is a concrete pump working here and this is a bridge the image shows a bridge and they use a specific showing system like tower show which is number this type of showing systems for this bridge as well or some of some people may use a combination of them you can use the prop one and tower show both of them and also depends on whatever you do and if you have such a task you need to use racker or maybe if if you are talking about the trench shore maybe you use this this model shoring is a temporary horizontal or vertical support system that prevent the failure or collapse of a permanent or temporary structure under construction so it depends on your activity you use one of those different types of shoring systems but before that because this is one of the most important activities and there are many risks associated with that and i personally have seen many failures during the construction i myself designed many formworks before and i've seen that this can affect on labors and sometimes the community as well if it's a tower crane your neighbors will be affected but if it's a form work like that usually your own labors or other suppliers labor will be affected or injured in the future so here i'm going to show you an arrived on the scene of a massive construction accident downtown they're trying to figure out why a two-story parking garage collapsed today nbc4's jane yamamoto is live in downtown with new details jane and Adrian, at this hour, the construction site has been shut down. A Metro spokesperson tells me they are relieved that no one was injured out here when part of it collapsed just before 9 o'clock this morning. It happened along the section of a two-story parking garage currently under construction. It is part of the Division 13 Metro project, which is a state-of-the-art bus maintenance facility. It's been under construction for the past two years. Now, just as they began pouring concrete, a safety inspector heard something. The weight of the concrete then led to the partial collapse. According to a Metro spokesperson, a full construction construction crew of about 150 people were on site. Thankfully, there have been no injuries. There's been a head count done. Everybody's it's accounted amazing. for. So we can be very thankful that there were no injuries. Uh, the, the structure, as you can see from it, is, uh, is, is significantly damaged. This partial collapse will now most likely delay the project that was scheduled to be completed January of next year. Okay, there is an example, another example here how an excavator can can come in contact with live power lines like this so that kind of risks should be also estimated or predicted before you need to uh, consider that the the length of the arm of that excavator and also the height of the power uh, lines as well so this is an example for an excavator here you can see the excavator is working here in such an area if you have a rail track rail or some uh, close to this excavator that can be an additional issue because when your excavator is working 300 degrees or moving around uh, there the the environment is noisy because the excavator itself has produced lots of um noises and the uh, the driver cannot properly hear if a train is coming towards that excavator so the the driver cannot um, be aware of that on time so there might be an incident when the 
driver is going to move the uh, excavator arm close to a rail track and also when he's digging he's not aware about uh, different pipes underground so if it's in the city area you need to dial before you dig so this is a free national referral service designed to prevent damages and disruption that is important because you can get some sort of understanding about the locations of pipes and cables underground but if you are working in an area without any drawings and maybe there is no enough information what is going to be there then you need to use different tools different kind of uh, radar penetration systems to give you some ideas about uh, the possibility of uh, the like a pipe or a cable underground but all that kind of things can be considered as a risk as a risk so you can uh, when you create your risk register table you can consider all of them but there is an important skill you need to to be aware of that and use it for as a part of your risk management process and its risk visualization and training you need to communicate with your labors properly so you can't give them the result of um, a complicated analysis computation and say this is the risk plan please read it because most of labors they as I said their objectives should be achieved within one week one month or a short term they, they don't have time to sit and read all the documentation uh, documentation and sometimes they are not able to read all of them or understand all of them with that kind of complex uh, terminologies so one way to communicate easily is sketching of course we have different types of visualizations uh, techniques that can be discussed a bit later but the sketching is the most important one easy and at the same time very cheap so you just need a pen and a piece of paper to sketch it you can see a couple of examples from my students in 2012 we um, we asked them we asked them to uh, sketch and show different types of uh, possible incidents any kind of risk they can imagine when an excavator is working somewhere there might be any specific pipes underground like a gas line or gas uh, pipe or something that is more that can cause uh, an important incident or can be a big risk so this is something that students sketched and also under type of sketching here you can see with excavator or two different cranes working here to move or dismantle a little tower in the middle here so this is the tower going to be for yeah so they are going to use this specific uh, uh, tower little tower here they're going to dismantle it or move it so you have two cranes one and two two different cranes are going to uh, work here and then you have a maybe a power line or uh, like a chain or something here as well so how you can deal with all kind of things and what kind of risks associated with this operation so this is something you can sketch here and you can see like there is a trench and this um, the, the driver cannot actually manage it and then you can see the incident here this sketch also used for instructing the driver so you can see like different zones or buffer here showing that they they need to know about the clearance and also the head with the power line as well so you can see how important and useful is sketching and you need to use this sketching 
um, skill for your risk management that is a different task should be done but so you need to watch this video this is about a construction site layout and you need to watch it and then create a risk register table for this specific site so you need to only identify three main risks and then use the template or develop a risk register uh, file and put all the three risks in that file with all the description and whatever is required for a risk register table so you can see here we are visit i'm visiting a construction site and the site uh, manager is talking uh, about this site what uh, they are doing exactly and based on this uh, conversation really based on this conversation you will be able to develop identify risk and develop your risk uh, uh, register file and this is something that you this is like a, you need to install youtube app on your smartphone so you need to use youtube app or if you use your desktop you can use youtube and then you can see all around the project so you can drag it and see what's going on uh, here around so watch this video and create your uh, risk register file